Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I am going to do your January the 22nd, just for today, in a meditation. How are you doing this morning? It's 4 a.m., and I am excited to be with you today from my home. How about that? <laughs> oh, recovery is good. The title of the meditation today is The School of Recovery. This is a program for learning. This is a program for learning. That comes from the basic text, page 16. Learning and recovery is hard work. The things we most need to know are often the hardest to learn. We study recovery to prepare ourselves for the experience life will give us. As we listen to others share in meetings, we take mental notes we can refer to later. To be prepared, we study our notes in literature between lessons. Just as students have the opportunity to apply their knowledge during tests, so do we have the opportunity to apply our recovery during times of crisis. As always, we have a choice in how we will approach life's challenges. We can dread and avoid them as threats to our serenity, or we can gratefully accept them as opportunities for growth. By confirming the principles we've learned in recovery, life's challenges give us increased strength. Without these challenges, However, we could forget what we've learned and begin to stagnate. These are the opportunities that prod us to new spiritual awakenings. We will find that there is often a period of rest after each crisis, giving us time to get accustomed to our new skills. Once we reflected on our experience, we are called on to share our knowledge with someone who is studying what we've just learned. In the school of recovery, all of us are teachers as well as students. Just for today, I will be a student of recovery. I will welcome challenges, confident of what I've learned and eager to share with others. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. Well, what a wonderful meditation talking about the school of recovery. And it really gives us an ideal. It sets it up for us, right? It talks about some of the things that we need to do in recovery. Learning recovery is hard work. And I like that. I, I, I want people to understand that it's not as simple as saying, keep it simple, stupid, right? It's not that simple. I just went through uh, an experience, right, with my family, and I share that with you guys. It was not that simple to apply the principles of recovery. And I do believe if it had not been for the podcast and doing that every day and being grounded with what I do at home, I do believe that I probably, I probably would not have gotten through it as well as I did. I probably would have more people to add on my step 10. And I only had one. I only had one person that I needed to add on my prompt mints. And I took care of that immediately, right? And it was so healing for the individual involved. It was very healing for them because they were misreading my responses personally, right? And so that was very healing. So I just want to say that recovery is work. Sometimes it's harder than others. Um, but the principles, right, of recovery, 
the suggestions of making a meeting 90 days in a row, right? Taking these suggestions. Um, some of these things are simpler than we make them. You know, so we have to strike a balance. We do need to understand that we're coming in here cold out of using, active using. And the wreckage, sometimes we're still living in the future wreckage of our past. Let me repeat that. Sometimes we're still living, when we come here, new and recovering, sometimes not so new, right? But we're coming back freshly. Or we've been around and we have not applied the principles of this program and it would look to onlookers as though we're using. We know we're clean, right? However, our circumstances indicate dirty living, okay? So sometimes we are still living in the future wreckage of our past, okay? And when that happens, it is very complicated to figure out how to dig ourselves out of the mess that we are in. I love this meditation. I don't like so much the word school because when I think about schooling someone, <laughs> I think about teaching them a lesson that they'll never forget. And I think about this master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> that I just completed, right? And I'm still begging for more, right? So I'm traumatized from the definite, you know, from the word school, right? But other than that, I love this meditation, the school of recovery, and it's a five star. It's something that we want to bend the page back or we want to save the video and come back to it because it talks about the process of learning the lessons. We're getting new information. We're storing them in our heads. And I told you the other day that our brains are magnificent, right? So we store this information. And as circumstances come up and we've been listening and learning, we pull that information out and we have an opportunity to take the test of life with the information we have. Okay, so what does it look like? Okay, your daddy died. Someone you love, right? Pull the information out. What did you do when your stepfather passed? Well, you went to the recovery house. You sat there till the meeting started. The word had passed that your stepfather had passed away, and you woke up to flowers, bouquets, literally, and cards from the fellowship surrounding you. Placed on your lap, at your feet, on the seat next to you, you woke up in a meeting in progress and they just loved you. So what that taught me, turn to the fellowship. The lesson from that was to lean on the fellowship because there's going to be some people that are going to understand how complicated it can be being the outside child. Okay? And so, and what that looks like. That was information I learned over the years and I was able to pull it out and apply it in the moment. And it says that we study in between. Showing up for class, the meetings. <laughs> you ever heard a newcomer call our meetings, going to those classes? That's because a lot of things related to recovery have become so commercialized, right? but we know they're not classes, but you can call them classes if you want to. <laughs> Long as you show up and attend, <laughs> you can show up. You can show up to class if you want to. And we learn in between those meetings. I was about to say in between those classes, right? We learn in between. There's assignments, but they're self-imposed, right? They're suggestions, they're self-imposed assignments. They're things that you choose to do because you want to do them, not because you have to. And some people, you know, some old heads would be like, 
yeah, I have to recover. There's there's no way I could not, right? So they they would use it in a sense that they know that if they stop their process of recovery, right? As soon as the maintenance stops, the madness begins. So we choose, it's self-imposed to study in between, grab our literature. I'm looking at my flat book again, right? My, my uh, step working guide, I'm looking at that again and trying to decide how do I want to go about it this time? What would be exciting for me this time? You know, because the topics have changed, right? The things that I'm applying steps to, the circumstances have changed. After 30 years and aging in the program, things begin to change. And so I'm learning that I'm still learning. What about you? Are you a student of recovery? Will you welcome challenges, understanding that these are opportunities for you to see where, where you are? You know, I had an interesting experience I want to talk about really, really quick here, right? So I took my boys and I knew it would be an extra expense. It would require some navigating, having younger ones with you in during a time that's quite serious. But it's hospice, right? So that means six months or less. And I wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to engage my father where he could respond and acknowledge them, right? So I took them along. But one of the sweet pleasures we had, because my boys are, they're in love with the water. In the summertime, we usually get to the lake first thing in the morning so they can swim. And my circumstances have changed, right? So I don't have that availability, but they love to swim. They got to swim once or twice a day for all of those four or five days we were in Iowa. They loved it. And the oldest one, he just comes up to me and he says, can you time me? I want to see how long it takes me to do a full lap, you know, down and back. So I started timing him. Do you know that kid had me timing him? I must have timed him like 30 times. And he would give himself a rest and he would do better. Then he'd try to do another one right back to back and he'd do, you know, take longer for him to finish. And he has a nice stroke. And it dawned on me, he's challenging himself to do better. He is challenging himself to do better. He's not on the swim team, never has been, but he knows he can swim and he wants to see what his time is, right? Now his brother, he had the same swim lessons as he did. Right. But his brother, anytime they go to compete, the brother stops halfway because he realizes his brother is winning. And I began to wonder, maybe this kid doesn't know what the stroke really is because he should. And I told him, I said, well, you know what? Instead of wanting to race your brother and beating him over and over, why don't you make sure he knows how to swim properly? Make sure he understands how to uh, do that long stroke, show him. So it's a fair competition. The little brother got upset. Like, I know how to swim. <laughs> I swim. You ain't got to teach me how to swim. And he was like, well, then show me. Do you know the little brother, he was within seconds of beating him. And the next time they they swam against each other. He actually beat him. He said, I told you I know how to swim. I just be doing that. I was like, okay. <laughs> so a lot of times we fake the funk because we really don't want to apply ourselves. We don't really want to get exhausted. But 
let someone get in our face and suggest that we're not recovering, suggest that we haven't applied the principles in all of our affairs, and we will get our dander up just like that youngest one. And we will show ourselves and everyone around us that we can do it. We can actually stop cussing people out in the meetings. We can actually stop sleeping around. We can actually pay our bills. We can actually buy homes and pay the mortgage on time. We can actually be in relationships and do healthy relationships. Yeah. I challenge you to challenge yourself to apply yourself to the school of recovery and take those lessons learned and allow them to be the catalyst to a better future. My name is Maddie Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today. I hope that you will have a beautiful day on purpose.